Hello, everybody. It's so lovely to see you guys on this wonderful long weekend here in Canada. Anyways, I believe in the United States, you guys have Independence Day, which is the 4th of July. But here in Canada, we have our long weekend to kick off the summer with July 1st being Canada Day. So for all of us Canadians, it's a great opportunity to just celebrate this wonderful country that we live in. Anyways, I thought it would be fun today as I'm slapping on my makeup on this clean face uh, to just do kind of a get ready with me for a soft kind of everyday makeup look and also just to kind of have a chatty get ready with me sesh to kind of address my slight absentee on my YouTube channel. So if you're interested in seeing that for the 45 plus uh, gal who really just loves makeup but works hard for her money uh, just like I do and I know you do then just keep watching this video uh, and before we get started if you're new to my makeup channel I just want to start off by saying you know uh, again all the products that I use if you're interested will be linked down below uh, that way I'll know the name or the shade of everything especially if you have a similar complexion to me but also for this makeup look just know that obviously I okay, but I've cleansed my face and then of course um, I put on a uh, SPF of 50 today for my sunscreen which is the ISN tree it is a hyaluronic acid watery sunscreen that is got all the good properties and it's hyaluronic acid so you put it on and it just helps to kind of hydrate it's waterproof it's vegan it's cruelty free and just absorbs so quickly and wonderful has no sent to it you can get it on Timu, Amazon, you know all the places. And the only other thing I have on my face is I use my spoolie and I just kind of like try to tame my untamable sort of like boyfriend brows because you know they're a whole thing onto themselves and I just use the NYX uh, here it is here the NYX snatch is it Snatch? <laughs> Lift and Snatch? Right there. Anyways, I will link that down below as well. So that is all that I have on my face at the moment. And um, I also like to, when I'm getting my makeup ready, just slap on a little lip balm. And this one is the MAC Prep and Prime. So not only is it a really moisturizing lip balm, but it also kind of prepares your lips for the lip products that you're gonna put on afterwards. Sorry, I just hit the microphone, which is over here. I'm a bit of a hot mess today. It feels kind of weird because I haven't really done a proper, you know, makeup video on my iPhone 14 for a little while, which is thus what we're going to address in this video. So anyways, let's just get into this before I literally just start to unravel. Okay, so let's just get into kind of this whole thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about. I want to share a, a moment in just in my recent past here, end of May, like May, June, that I went through um, just because I think it's kind of important to talk about issues of mental health and I want to keep it um, relative and relatable, but at the same time, just know that by no means am I using this story to garner sympathy uh, or, you know, uh, any of that pity or sorrow or like poor me. I, I'm not. I want to share it because I think it's important. So uh, I'm going to start off my makeup look with a decent. Um, you know, makeup primer. This is the Fenty Beauty. It's the soft matte um, primer. So really like that one. And it just kind of helps, especially if, you know, you're in the summertime. Not that I have oily skin, but, you know, I tend to kind of get a little bit oily still in the T-zone, you know, even though I'm of a certain age where the skin feels like it's getting drier everywhere else. Um, it it hasn't really dried up there, so <laughs> so I'm just going to put that on. But anyways, it kind of has a mild smell to it, which I like. All right, enough delaying. Let's get into the story. Uh, if you are part of my Radiating Beauty fam, you will know that... Um, 
you know, I've had this channel since 2016. I actually started this channel. I think my first video I posted, which I made private now, was in the latter part of 2015. So that'll tell you. It'll also tell you that if it shows my subscriber count that, you know, I didn't break any YouTube records here by having this channel for eight plus years. Uh, but the reason I started my channel back in 2016 was really because I just felt like I was really into makeup and wanting to learn more techniques and just wanting to, sh you know, enjoy watching people share my enthusiasm for all things makeup makeup, skincare, you know, fragrances. And uh, there wasn't a lot in 2015 and 16 that were like the 45 plus group. And I really felt that we were sort of underrepresented. Uh, now, I think it's, it's a lot better. Um, it's definitely a lot better as a lot more people are not so afraid of it coming on and, you know, sharing their uh, techniques and tips and, you know, just the general chit chat. And it's been a really wonderfully fun hobby. Like I said, not breaking any records. This is important as I will get to what happened or transpired. So just to give you a little background kind of, I guess, history to the story. Um, a year ago, I went to this a big work-related uh, two-day event outside my city and when you travel to these events you know um, I mean variably you're going to bump into people that are friends of friends um, you know old co-workers that sort of thing and to get to this particular event um, I traveled with another co-worker and friend and it was during a horrendous snowstorm like you know, I mean, I live in Western Canada, I live in Alberta, and we get snowstorms here and there. But this one was like epic, because to be fair, the last couple of years, we haven't really had a lot of snow uh, at all. Um, but this particular uh, trip, it was crazy. The highway between the two cities that I was like from my city to the one I'm traveling to, it was like sheet ice, blowing snow, zero visibility, Anyways, it took a tremendously long time to get there. And by the time we got to the other city and checked into our hotel, I needlessly to say, like, we were all completely haggard and tired and uh, a little stressed out. So um, that kind of starts the whole thing, hopefully paints the picture a little bit. Okay, for foundation today, I'm going to use this one, which I purchased and I don't use it all that often, um, but I like it. It's the L'Oreal True Match, and it is their, what do you call it? It's their bl Super Blendable Foundation. This is in the color 1.5 Linen, and uh, generally because I, I don't tan in the summer as well, I find that it usually works pretty well. All right, so let's get a slap of my puppy on my face. All right, so... Anyways, um, yeah, so get to this um, big, this big two day event. And when you go there, you know, I've been I've been to many of these. I mean, you don't exactly pack, you know, to impress you're there to like, uh, listen to guest speakers and do breakout sessions and, you know, learn things from fellow healthcare workers. And, um, you know, like I said, you bump into people that you know, you may see people from, you know, other work sites and hospitals, um, which is always the case. And I actually usually find that to be really quite fun. But anyways, um, you just bring casual clothes, you know, you bring casual clothes. I do very minimalistic, casual makeup, you know, there's nothing like they do have a couple of evening events. I don't even usually attend those. I kind of just generally stick with my own group. But on this particular um, work um, trip um, during one of the breaks on the first day, I think it was the first day, I, I saw um, some gals at another table. And long story short, I just went out of my way just to say hello, you know, that they had made it safely. Uh, it was actually quite a brief conversation. And then that was the end of it. And then did the whole conference and came back. And then later, a week or so later, I was talking to a very, very close friend of mine. And she was asking me, you know, how the conference had gone and the whole, you know, just everything. So I was telling her, 
And she's and I said, oh, I saw, you know, so and so and so and so. Um, so these two gals that she works with. And I said, yeah, I said, I saw them. They were at another table and I went over to say hi. And I said, it was nice to see them. And she basically just froze in her conversation. She just stopped whatever she was saying. And she just said to me, um, in the future, she said, don't go out of your way to say hello to these gals again, because they're not your friends. And I was like, kind of shocked by that. But at the same time, I was like, well, I, I never thought they were my friends. Um, but so then I asked her why, what, what had transpired or what had they said and she said it wasn't important um because their opinions didn't matter but she said she didn't want to um divulge what was said or what they said about me but she said just put it in your hat keep it in the back of your head don't go out of your way to say hello because these these girls are not your friend and I can't tell you how it made me feel when she said that. I really, deep down, of course, like anybody, wanted to know. And I'm sure if I forced it upon her, she would have told me what they said. But but I, I didn't want to. You know, I did, but I didn't want to. Like, I just thought, well, I don't really know them. I don't work with them. They're not my close friends. Um, you know, what could they have possibly said about me? But I'm sure obviously it had something to do with the way I looked or, you know, what, it, what else could it be? It must have been the way I was looking that particular day. And so I kind of just dropped it because I thought to myself, like, should I really be concerned with what people that, you know, are not my people outside my social group, um, what they have to say about me? But it was like one of those nagging things in the back of your head. And it just kind of sat there, you know, just kind of like a heavy weight. And uh, many times, you know, I wondered as the year passed, like what was said. And but I had a feeling it was probably just the way I was dressed or my hair or a combination of the two. Because to be honest with you, after that horrendous travel uh, the night before, I'm pretty sure that I didn't look my freshest and my best. And um, so now speed up to this year. Okay, so got the foundation on. Now I'm just going to put on a little bit of my Merit 2-in-1 uh, foundation stick. Love this, but I like to kind of just use it because it is quite an expensive uh, formula. I like to use it just um, kind of in the areas that need just a little bit more coverage, if you know what I mean. So, and it's a beautiful blendable. Um, I think this is also in the color, is this in the color linen or bare, I think. But anyways, it's really just absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, so I'll use my sponge. So yeah, speed it up to this year again, I have, you know, so I leave that behind. And like I said, even though it acts like a weight kind of like in my conscious subconscious, um, I didn't pursue it any further and then speed it up till this year. And this year, lo and behold, another two day conference. And all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, when I thought I kind of just parked it from last year, it reared its ugly head. And when I was getting ready for this two day conference, this time in my city, I thought to myself, I better bring up my A game because, you know, sometimes when I'm busy and I'm working, um, I don't always like, you know, worry about how I look like from every angle. Like, is my hair looking clean and tidy and professional and nice? Is my makeup on? Is the clothes I'm wearing like slimming enough and, you know, appropriate enough, um, but not, you know, over the top? Uh, will it be comfortable? Does it make me look fat? Like all the feels, right? But I really was like, I need my makeup to be on point. And then I just started just completely unnecessarily stressing myself out about what may have been said a year before. And then I literally just had a full on like kind of depressive moment that last from the start of that till probably the middle of June of this year 
when I realized that not even knowing what was said, but bringing back all these insecurities, that it had literally dragged me back to like my my early 20s and mid 20s, back in the day when I actually used to care what total strangers thought of me. And it was funny because somewhere between 29 and 45, those were my bulletproof years. Like literally when I tell you that I couldn't give a shit what people said, um, as long as I knew what I brought to the table and anything and everything that I wanted to do job wise, professionally, whatever I wanted to accomplish during that time, I actually accomplished and um, even many times surprised my own adult self and felt invincible, like bulletproof, like nobody could put a dent in my armor. And suddenly, like, I don't know if it was because I'm aging now and I have this channel and I felt more vulnerable and out there that all of a sudden what might have been said, which again, I don't even know what was said, but what might have been said about my appearance just literally stripped that all away. And I was back into my early 20s uh, feeling like completely like deflated, defeated, um, sad, depressed, like all of the things, low self-esteem. It was just unbelievable. And luckily, luckily for the fact that between 29 and my like mid to late 40s, uh, was my, you know, superhero days, I want to call it, where when I look back, I just felt like amazing, the best. Um, you know, my hair couldn't look better. I couldn't look better. Everything I wanted to do, I accomplished. Like, everything was just so perfect back then in my life. And like I said, if I hadn't had those days, I think I would have be, I would have been a, in a lot more trouble. Okay, so now that I've uh, fully let that foundation and the merit foundation stick kind of like, you know, breathe on my skin, I'm going to give some depth to this otherwise very beige face by using my Say Sun Melt uh, Cream Bronzer in medium. And... Uh, I am very hard to really like a bronzer because I am so fair, but this is a good one. It's a good product. So anyways, back to the story. So thankfully for the fact that I actually had those, you know, those bulletproof superhero days um, because I think it was what allowed me to get back to kind of the state where I am in now and talking to you. Um, because, you know, I think otherwise where my thoughts and low self-esteem and feelings were going was, you know, was going down a dark path. And I'm not sure all what brought it on, um, like to how bad I felt, but um, just suffice it to say that I really started looking at every aspect of my life now and started thinking like, you know, you let yourself go. You didn't prioritize yourself. You look tired. You look old. You look wrinkled. You look haggard. You look fat. You should have kept yourself in shape. You, you know, and all of these things, I just literally started attacking every aspect of my life. And it's kind of what led me to want to share this mental health journey with you because I think as women we all do this far too often where you know men might have a moment or two where they're just like they catch their own reflection or you know somebody says something or you know they they don't realize they're aging and, and getting old and wrinkled and fat and all of a sudden you know some good looking girl or woman passes by and doesn't give them the time of day but um, but it, it certainly does happen for women, I think, far more because of 
you know, just the way we even compare ourselves to each other or the standards of beauty that we compare ourselves to and that we're kind of held to a different level, I feel still uh, very much so than, than men are. So that's kind of my feeling and the struggle that it goes with. So that's why I think this story is very relatable just because I think we all go through it. But yeah, I had that period of like, you know, three and a half, four weeks where I was really at my lowest. I just, I didn't even barely want to put on makeup. I didn't want to look in the mirror. I didn't want to see my face. I just wanted to kind of just go through the paces, you know, get ready, go to work, come home. But so depressed, like just laying around like a log, not doing anything, feeling like, I had really just let my whole self down over one little incident again that happened a year ago where I don't even know what people said about me. Like how ridiculous is that? It's completely ridiculous when you think of all the things that we could go through and you know, it's sometimes is this triggering. It was almost like a triggering of PTSD uh, from insecure feelings that I had probably pent up from when I was like a young girl that I never really got rid of. And um, anyways, I mean, I didn't need to go see anybody. I shared it with a couple of close friends um, because um, not my husband, but some girlfriends, because I just really felt like I needed the more I articulate how I feel. Um, it lets me be more objective about where I am on, on my emotional spectrum. And then I was able to kind of just get myself a, a little step each time over that sort of horrible feeling. Okay, I like that I got some warmth to the face. I always apply my blush kind of at the end. So let's concentrate a little bit on the eyes. Now I'm going to use two palettes today for my soft everyday makeup look. Um, let me just dust off my fingerprints. I'm going to use my much loved, the Natasha Denona. This is, you know, the glam palette, which is in the light. You can see it is well loved. I use these eyeshadows quite a lot. And so I'm going to use that to build the, the look. And then also I'm going to just take this out that I got in a boxy charm, which is the Ofra Signature Palette and Lux, and this one of these colors, but these colors, this one, Rodeo Drive Highlighter, like as an eyeshadow, is the chef's kiss. So I'm going to prep the eyes with a little bit of eyeshadow base, which I'm just going to say I recommend because uh, especially if you're a hooded eye babe like myself and you got the old dreaded heavy hoods that sit on your lids, you need to just apply something where it's actually going to, you know, adhere. Something that's going to grab the eyeshadow and adhere to your actual uh, lids. Because otherwise, you know, then it's going to be sliding all off. So just tapping that on and then I'm just going to let it kind of set up and dry a little bit. And the nose is looking very tanned with the say bronzer. But I'm just going to define it a little bit more with my... Merit stick just kind of down the center because I always like to just have a slightly snatched nose uh, as Scott Barnes says keep it snatched all right so let's just go off I usually just go in this order obviously the lightest um, kind of camel color is my favorite and look I even clean my brushes for this occasion so <laughs> not hard because I haven't been using a lot of it so I'm gonna dip in here just to kind of set that up as the transition color and help to kind of just you know get rid of a little bit of the hood so remember that darker colors recede and lighter colors bring forward. That is a principle of colors. But anyways, you know, anytime you're playing with eyeshadows. So where was I? So um, little by little, the more I started to talk about it, the better I felt just about my overall sort of like state of mind at the time. And uh, but in the depths of it, I was feeling so incredibly low. And, um, you know, I still have to decompartmentalize all the feelings that I was going through um, because they still linger a little bit, but not as heavy as they were. 
It was so heavy in fact during those four weeks that I really just thought I'll do a quick video and I'm going to shut down my whole YouTube channel in the way that I'm not going to, you know, produce any more videos. I'm not going to talk because I just thought, how can you talk about makeup and all the feels of being positive and, you know, all these fun, great things? Because people only want to, well, if you're like me, you want to be around positive people and, you know, like-minded people and... Unfortunately, the world is not just, you know, rainbows and unicorns, as we well know as adults. Um, you know, if you turn on the TV and you watch the news, you well know. But I just thought I felt like an imposter. I felt like an ugly duckling. I felt like a poser. I just thought I think it's time to just wrap it up. And thankfully, I didn't because to be fair, this is where I love to be when, you know, my husband is off at the gym or he's walking the dog or he's working um, when I'm home alone and it's just me and my makeup and you guys. This is what I love. This is my most favorite hobby. Okay, so after that transition color, let's go with this other one right here, which is the medium brown. And just going to take a little bit on a slightly more dense brush, and I'm just going to start to kind of build up the outer corners. Again, everything I do with my eyeshadow is really just because I want to kind of keep that bright eye you know, moment because I do have hooded lids. And unless you get surgery to kind of correct that problem, uh, you kind of have to play around with colors, right? So that's what I'm doing. I'm just going to put it in the outer um, corner here and just kind of like blend it so that I get a little bit more dimension, as you can see. See the dimension <laughs> building. And um, yeah, and then I'm going to apply an even darker color here in a second. Sorry. I know it's really hard to like blend and talk at exactly the same time. So I'm going to now go into the darker um, one, which is this one right here. It's kind of like a um, like a I don't know like an espresso brown and tapping that on and then this is really going to intensify the eyeshadow look so I just kind of tap it on at a 45 and then drag it across like that so that it kind of blends and then I will do a full blend with a you know a brush with no product on it so yeah, so anyway, so that's why I just couldn't bring myself to, you know, luckily I didn't come on here. I didn't say I'm like, you know, going to kick the can and I'm done with YouTube um, because like I said, I really enjoy it here. I love talking to you guys and however many few people that is. You know, I didn't start my channel in 2016 with the idea to like break any records on YouTube for the 45 plus. Like this is just what I want to do. And, you know, if you stumbled upon or found my my channel, then you will, whoops, you will appreciate this fact because obviously then you are a like minded individual. And I appreciate you. I really do. Because when I watch the people that I follow, um, I don't speed up the videos. I watch their video straight through, literally straight through. So that's probably why I don't comment on everybody's videos every month because the ones that I really enjoy watching, I always comment, always give a thumbs up. I participate in that community. You know, that's why I subscribe to those people. So, but you know, YouTube, they keep saying, well, it's not about the subscribers. It's about the views, but whatever. I derail for the moment to just talk about the fact that YouTube is, I don't know, is just a hobby. So now that I kind of have that look on, and like I said, I just kind of then, you know, took a little bit. I like to just kind of soften the edges because, of course, would I be lying if I said I didn't have a little texture on the lids? And I like to kind of just blow that out just a little bit there. And I do have a little bit here, but fear not because we are also going to do the bottom. So I'm just going to take a detail brush and I'm going to go with the medium brown, not the really dark. And I'm just going to follow that color down on the lower lash because that also I have found when you're doing that soft makeup look, it really creates uh, continuity to the eye, but it m gives you that sort of like bigger doe eyed look. So you can do this also with just the tip of your other makeup brush. But anyways, I really like that. 
All right, so I will do um, mascara at the end. Now I'm going to take the Ofra, that's this little signature palette here, and take the little guard off, and I'm going to use the Rodeo Drive just because it's that gorgeous champagne gold, and I'm literally when um, it is a metallic or a foil of some kind, I love to use the oils of my finger and tap it on. So that's why I'm using my finger, should you be wondering. So there is the eyes, and to kind of just finish off the eye look, um, where I'd normally show you my my favorite all-time Essence Mascara, the Lash Princess, the green and the black one. It is dried up, has to be replaced, so I'm gonna use this one that I received in a beauty box subscription. It is the KVD, it's the full sleeve, so it's a tubing mascara. Um, but it is, um, but I really like the brush on it. So just gonna, just gonna give a little length to my otherwise kind of thin little sparse, um, little lashes, but you know, it's not bad. I actually really like the shape of this brush, which usually I don't, I like the natural combs, but this one I really like, so just gonna apply that. Oops, let's get that big gooper on there. Um, yeah, so like I said, I'd like to really kind of have some time to sit down and just decompartmentalize all of my feelings um, and why this one event led me to that. You know, like I said, I think part of it is that I was a relatively insecure young woman person and a lot of what people thought about me affected me back then um, and then you know came into this wonderful awakening like that age range you know from my late 20s to my mid to late 40s where I felt like a superhero and now I'm kind of back into the stage where I'm like you know I need to reevaluate everything all over again not so much me or my value but I mean just the whole experience. So for um, my lips, I'm going to use this very well-loved little pencil. All of my Canadian girlies will love it because it is the Annabelle uh, lip liner. It's in the color Spice. If you know me, if you watch my videos, you know I love um, like brownie nudes, pinky nudes. And these pencils are so cheap and they are creamy, as you can see, without tugging, but they're not too creamy. So I love to use these. Uh, and this one just, you know, because I love pinky nudes, almost goes with everything. So here we are. We are at kind of a good spot. Um, oops. In my mental health. Um, in regards to um, obviously wanting to at least slap on some makeup and get on here and just be a little bit more vulnerable and share this with you because like I said I think we've all been there I don't think I know we've all been there and um, maybe in sharing this that you feel like not so low not so sad that you don't try to you know, tear yourself down when you have, you know, worked so hard to build yourself up all those years. And I think it's just sometimes the phase and the timing of certain things. I'm going to do my water line now uh, for liner. And I'm just using this coal. Uh, this is a Marcel coal eyeliner, but it is not, it's not white. So don't everybody get your knickers in a knot. It is literally, if you can see, I could literally paint it over some of my spots on my hand, but it is literally beige and it's um, approved by the, opt, the ophthalmologist of Canada. So it is eye safe. And believe me, that's important for me because my eyes are super, super sensitive. So anyways, I find it just a really nice way to also finish and give you that eye brightening look without the white that the 20 year olds use because I just find that that doesn't look so good. And I'm actually going to use a little bit more of the Ofra and I'm just gonna use that on the inner corner. Okay, so here is this uh, little palette again. 
I used to be the biggest lover. If you could see over there my eyeshadow palettes from the past, and I the bigger the better because it just meant more a variety of colors to play with, but I really love traveling and using smaller eyeshadow palettes. I just think that, you know, the colors are curated, the color stories match, so it's like basically makeup for dummies. You can just go from one shade to the other, and they're just so practical for that everyday sort of soft look. So just taking some of the Rodeo Drive and just gonna put it on the inner corner, like right there, just again, just to give it that really nice bright punch um, to give that eye brightening look. So yeah, just getting in there like that. And I'm just going to hit this, the arch of my brows with this as well, because you know, that's always a nice look when the light catches it. I don't know why today, it just seems like today I have like a heavy hand and um, yeah, really like that look. That's good. So I want to finish up this look by just giving a little bit of um, blush. So I have a couple of options. Um, I have the Say. This is in the color Chili. I actually really like this. So I'm going to use a little bit of it. It's quite pigmented. So a little goes a long way. Kind of just have to give it a dot and a dot. And I mean just like a little bit and a dot and a dot. I also like to, to do a little bit on my nose. I know, I know. Some people like it, some people don't. I do. And then I'm just going to use this angled um, brush and I'm just going to tap and blend. And it's just so pretty. And I, I do like to keep my blush up a little bit higher because I don't want my cheeks to be kind of dragged down. Um, another technique just to kind of keep everything like up, you know? If you can't afford to go for uh, plastic surgery, which even if I could afford, I wouldn't. Um, you just want to kind of keep it lifted and light and pretty. Oh, yeah, she's got some blind and glow on those arches, girls. But you can see just how effortless and pretty that is. You kind of do have to be careful because you saw how little I used. And it's a lot. But also keep in mind for the longevity. Um, I somehow have like a, a patch of um, bronzer right here because I have a little texture. But you can just um, see that it's effortless. But just keep in mind too, most bronze or most bronzers, most blush that are cream will over time kind of, you know, just fade away. So your skin tends to eat them a little bit more. But when you're just going out, you know, and about um for the day do you need it to be locked down are you going to the red carpet event later uh, if you are tell me okay so the blush is on the eyes are done this is kind of the soft look now i just kind of want to finish this off this was in the birthday gift that i picked for my sephora gift for this birthday and it is the kosas uh wet lip oil and this is in the color unbuttoned this was, oh, you guys, I absolutely love this. And actually, this size is perfect for me. So I'm going to put it on because it is juicy. It's like the perfect color. This smells good. It smells like all my other MAC products. And I absolutely love the feel of it. Mm, it's creamy. It's just, it's delightful. Anyways, you guys, this is my very soft, everyday summer makeup look that I am loving with the products, like I said, that I will list below. Now I just want to just finish up my story as to this whole long and very chatty um, YouTube video. But um, again, so in sharing this story with you, like I said, I've probably, you know, dropped points along the way uh, as I was trying to do my makeup. Um, I was hoping that I'd share that with you because I think we've all experienced it and just know that if you're going through those kind of low moments, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, like I said, just sharing it with a couple of girlfriends and then just hearing their take and their feedback really just kind of got me to this place again where, you know, um, 
it's it's still okay to be critical of oneself. I think it's good practice to just make sure that, you know, you haven't given up on yourself, that you didn't pack it all in when you turned like 50 or whatever, whatever that birthday was for you. But, but um, just know that, um, you know, we're not, the outside is not the sum of all of us as we should know, you know. I am more the inside and my heart and my soul than I am the outside. The outside is just the package that addresses the inside. So um, what I bring to the table still is all from the inside. And, um, and for most people, I hope that's for you. I hope that if you're on my channel, then you're just like me, uh, that you're a good person. Uh, in your heart and in your soul you're you're a girl's girl you're the person that you know supports everybody's success no no matter how big or how small and you're never jealous or envious about that that you really uphold women and you know the females in your life um, as I do so I hope that that is you because then you and I are exactly the same and this is where we need to be in this corner of YouTube is where we need to be for you know authentic caring loving women and knowing that that is truly who I am um, and every day, every interaction that I have, whether it be with one of my patients or a coworker or somebody else's coworker, that's what I bring to the table is my heart and my soul and my friendship. Sometimes I wear my emotions on my sleeve. Is that always the best? No, because sometimes we should guard our feelings, but it's okay. It's okay to have a sad moment. It's okay to feel down. And what's not okay is to let those down moments really get so deep Deep, that it drags you down a deeper hole that you may not get out of because there's always somebody to talk to and if you need to you can reach out and talk to me because I really was pretty depressed and sad for a good full month until I just pulled myself back up with my own britches just by knowing that in the past none of that silliness would have made any difference in my life. So why should it start now? And, um, and I hope that in sharing this story, you'll know why there was a little bit of an absence there on my YouTube vi videos. Maybe you noticed it, maybe you didn't, you know, um, but that's why. Um, but I'm back, babies, and <laughs> whether you want it or not, um, I will be doing my very best uh, every week to upload a new video. I don't know if you saw the last video I uploaded, which was the ASMR one. That was one that I had played with way before that whole sort of dark period, and I just thought it was kind of fun. Um, I don't know if I'll do any any other ASMR videos. I guess I kind of screwed up on that, but that was my first take, and it was fun. It's just fun. This is all just fun. Talking about makeup is just really like it's the conduit to connect with you guys. That's what it's all about. So anyways, you guys, I hope now that you kind of have an idea as to why I had a little break from YouTube, and I'm back, and that is why, and uh, I would would love to just read your comments you know do you like this kind of like content where people just kind of get down and dirty and real about life situations do you like the makeup look um, is this where you need to be in the corner of YouTube it would be wonderful if you just stumbled upon and found that this was your family because uh, you would definitely be appreciated and loved by me. There's no doubt about that. But anyways, you guys, if you're my Canadian girls, uh, soon to be all my American friends for Independence Day, which is, I believe, July the 4th. But if you're Canadian, then you're celebrating this wonderful, wonderful weekend and um, have an amazing long weekend here in Canada and just embrace all of what is great in our great country of Canada and love it, enjoying the beautiful weather that we have been having here in Alberta and in Western Canada and um, just l sending some love to our wonderful country. Happy Canada Day to all of my Canadian friends. Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful long weekend.